Okay, uh, so I'm sharing my screen. Uh, hopefully you can see it. So like I said, I'm going to start with what we had done last year and it was actually just one year back. It was uh, May 2023 and now, uh, you know, we are in the new year. So uh, we, we, like I said, we are extending the capabilities of Atal Tinkering Lab and we are looking more at artificial intelligence. Uh, and we are going to specifically look at two devices, uh, uh, the Husky Lens and the Arduino Nano 33 BLE Sense, which is a relatively new Arduino board, which has AI capabilities. So just to remind you what we had done last year, uh, I had explained to you that when we say artificial intelligence, what we mean is that uh, machines uh, or computers can mimic or copy some aspects of human intelligence. So um, th this has been going on for many, many decades. Uh, humans have been trying to make computers which are kind of, you know, uh, intelligent like human beings. And one of the first effort was to make a computer which was, uh, which could play chess. So it could play chess again and again and again and again. And each time it played chess, it remembered the moves. And so it remembered that if I move this and the count, the other player moves this, uh, you know, all these moves are made, hundred moves are made, what happens? And by playing the game tens of thousands of time, the computer learned uh, how to play chess. So that was like the very first, you know, kind of uh, foray into artificial intelligence. So artificial intelligence simply means that when machines are trying to mimic or copy human intelligence. And it could be vision, uh, and vision is what we are going to look into today and tomorrow, uh, or it could be natural language processing. Uh, so we had done some bits of both vision, computer vision and natural language processing uh, last year. So when I say computer vision, we are basically saying that can the computer, the camera in the computer, when it looks at something, can it recognize it? Not just take a photograph, but recognize it. So can it recognize that this is a human face versus this is a, a cat or a dog or a, a table or a chair? Uh, so, so those kinds of things, whether it can recognize face, it can re recognize colors, it can recognize lines, it can recognize maybe even QR code. Those are examples of human, uh, of computer vision. And Husky Lens, uh, this device uh, that we will be looking at, is capable of doing many such things. So that is what we are going to look uh, look at uh, later in the session. And the other thing, other example of human intelligence could be natural language. So natural language processing means that I am saying something and my words are making sense to you. That means that human intelligence has the capability of understanding language. And not just language, but sentiment like my sentiment right now is very neutral i'm not angry i'm not sad i'm not uh, you know overly happy or anything like that it's just a you know very neutral and you can make out from the way i speak and if i uh, were to get angry my you know tone will change my words will change and you will understand that you know uh, this other person is now angry so that's what we mean by human intelligence it's uh, sorry natural language processing it's not just ability to understand language but to understand the uh, uh, the real meaning. So if I say my son, uh, I'm talking about my child. Whereas uh, when I say son, I may be meaning sun in the sky. So it sounds the same, but the meaning is very different. So natural language processing means all these things. Can you understand the nuance? Uh, and can computers understand that? That in a given text, the text may be same, but it may be angry, it may be uh, happy, it may be cheerful. So to understand the emotions, to understand the meaning, that is what is natural language processing. And we had done some of it last year. Uh, we are not going to get into NLP uh, today and tomorrow. We are going to look at computer vision. So the other thing to understand then is how do computers learn? And when computers learn, we simply say that it's machine learning because it's machines that are learning. So when machines are trying to learn whether it's natural language processing or computer vision or some other aspect of human intelligence, that is what is machine learning. So uh, why I'm explaining this to you is that some of the stuff which we had done last year, Google, Teachable Machine and you know whatever else uh, was based on machine learning. And, and these devices are also based on machine learning. 
so that's why i'm giving you a little bigger picture so that you understand uh, you know it's not simply magic that uh, you know i will click a button and and this camera will recognize faces how is it recognizing faces faces that's what uh, you know what i'm trying to explain here so we had done all this last time also i had explained that what's the difference between ai and traditional computing or traditional computing and machine learning so when we talk about traditional computing which is what you know in your computer science class you may be doing when you are learning python or or something else that in traditional learning we would give some data to the computer uh, so let's say you wanted to calculate the average height of students in class 8 so then the data would be the height of all the students and then you give the algorithm which is basically you give the instructions to the computer to say that uh, so you want to find the average height so you just give the formula of height uh, of uh, formula of average so that's how the traditional computing you give data and you give a instruction set or the algorithm to the computer and what the computer can do really really fast is that it can process the data so maybe if it's 10 students you can calculate the average very fast if it's 100 students you will take some time to calculate the average if it's you want to calculate the average height of all indians that will take you a lot of time but for the computer it, it's all you know in seconds it can do that so this is traditional computing you give the data you give the algorithm and computer just processes the data and give you the result okay so this is not here we are saying that the computer is doing processing but the computer is not intelligent because we are telling the computer the instructions we are giving the instructions to the computer so then it's just simply following the instructions what it can do is just process the data very fast as against this when we talk about machine learning we say that we give we still give a lot of data to the computer okay so we give a lot of data and because we have to give a lot of data you might have heard the word it's uh, you know people call it uh, uh, big data so we give a lot of data so here i'm giving an example uh, i'm sticking with computer vision so let's say we give the computer uh, hundreds of thousands or maybe even millions of chest x ray okay chest x ray so chest x ray is just a you know a, a photograph it's just a digital uh, photograph in the sense that it's just a you know for the computer it's just bits right it's just binary data nothing else uh so uh so so we we give a lot of we upload a lot of uh lung x rays and then we tell the computer that in let's say if let's say we upload 1 million you know chest x rays and for 100000 of those we tell the computer that these have got a tumor okay uh so we are just uploading the images and we are telling the computer oh you know these these uh, particular x rays they've got a tumor and then we don't tell the computer how to distinguish between one x ray without a tumor and one x ray with a tumor the computer learns by looking at all kinds of pattern recognition and it's it's not it's not uh, magic again it's just simple statistics it will do hundreds of statistical analysis to figure out some algorithm or some instruction to distinguish between one lung x ray which has a tumor and another lung x ray which does not have a tumor so i'm saying the main difference between artificial between traditional computing and artificial intelligence is that in traditional computing we give the data and we give the instruction computer only processes but in machine learning we give the data and we give lot of data but we don't give the algorithm the computer learns how to generate the algorithm it's something similar to you know think of a baby a human baby so a human baby is born and you know you you tell the baby oh this is a cat this is a dog this is a cat so you show many cats and dogs and the baby slowly learns uh, okay this is a cat and this is a dog even though both have like four feet and you know they've got whiskers and they've got two ears and a tail and whatever but the baby realizes the difference between a cat and a dog and just like when the baby will see a fox for the first time the baby might say it's a dog because the baby doesn't know that there is something other than a cat or a dog right so i'm saying machine learning is much like that and that is what we will learn when we will use these devices that 
it all depends on how much data we are giving. So if we have not told the computer, we've only shown the computer cats and dogs, and we will show it a fox, the computer will also most likely say that it's a it's a dog because that's how it you know it recognizes it. Then we can train the computer to recognize foxes and then it'll know if this is a cat, this is a dog, this is a fox. And like that, we can keep going. We can say, okay, now add a wolf and you know all, all kinds of animals and it'll learn how to distinguish it. So that's what is the main difference between, uh, between traditional computing and between machine learning or artificial intelligence. So there are many types of machine learning. Um, and, and one of some, you know, the reason I'm also explaining this big picture is because uh, besides doing projects with your students, your students also may be participating in challenges like Manak or some other innovation challenge or, you know, some other global challenge. And in those challenges, what is important is that they should know about, you know, what, what all different types of AI exist today. They may not know how to do it, how to program those AIs, but just the fact that they know they can come up with ideas. So that's one of the reasons why I'm, I'm explaining this, you know, bigger picture, uh, you know, uh, theory so that when you are working with them on Manak and all these kind of things, you can tell them that, look, this is all the different things you can do with AI today. And hence, can you come up with, you know, more innovative solutions? So supervised learning is, is the example I just gave you is called supervised learning, where we give a lot of big data to the computer, but we also label the data. So we tell the computer, this is, you know, a lung x-ray with a tumor, and this is a lung x-ray without a tumor. So we label the data and that helps the computer learn. So this is called supervised learning because we are telling the computer, we are giving some information about the data to the computer. Then the next one is unsupervised learning where we don't label the data. And I'll give you some examples uh, uh, once I've explained all the different types of machine learning. And then there's something called reinforcement learning. We'll look at all these things. Um, and then there is something called transfer learning. And finally, these are the main, uh, you know, main, main categories of artificial intelligence. There may be many other uh, main categories of machine learning. There may be many other, uh, you know, uh, types of machine learning, but these are the main ones. Okay, so let's look at the other one. So I'm saying here, this is the first one I showed you. This is supervised learning because we uploaded a lot of data and we pointed, we labeled the data. We, we told the computer, this has a tumor. This doesn't have a tumor. That is what is called supervised learning. And then in the same thing, if I give the computer a lot of data and I don't give any labels, I do not tell the computer that this is, uh, uh, you know, this one has a tumor. This one doesn't have a tumor. I just give data, raw data. And the computer does all kinds of pattern recognition. Again, here pattern recognition means how the computer will work. It will do a bit by bit analysis, every pixel by pixel analysis of each pic, each photograph that you've uploaded. And it will try to see the difference between pixels. And then it will come up with its own algorithm to detect the uh, tumor. So that this is unsupervised learning. When we don't provide any information to the computer, we simply upload the data and we tell the computer, you figure out what is the pattern here. Okay. Uh, then I said the third type of learning is called reinforcement learning. Again, it all starts with big data. Uh, AI works on big data. You have to give a lot of samples to the computer. Uh, and that is what you will see when we start using vision sensor that we will take a lot of photographs and the machine will then learn how to recognize whatever face or object or a color or whatever uh, uh, Husky lens can do. Right. So in reinforcement learning, we give a lot of data and then what we do is the computer will give us some results and we tell the computer whether it got it wrong or right. Okay. So we are reinforcing this learning. We are giving, we are rewarding the computer. So we say plus one, if you get it right, negative marks, if you get it wrong. And this is another way of, uh, uh, you know, and you can draw the same parallel with human uh, way we humans learn, you know, this is what you do in the classroom, you know, students come, you teach them, you take a test. And then in the test, you say, you know, this is right, this is wrong. And hopefully the child has learned or the student has learned something. So that is what, this is another way that computers uh, learn. This is another form of uh, machine learning called reinforcement learning. And then there is a third, 
another type of learning called transfer learning so transfer learning is is very interesting what happens is in transfer learning let's say you have uploaded uh, 100000 images of chest x ray and the computer created a lung cancer detection algorithm or a tumor detection algorithm or basically what it has done is it has looked at uh, 100000 images of lung of x ray lung uh, x ray of lungs and it has figured out anomalies anomalies means that this looks normal and here there is a problem right so this is uh, you use this machine learning to create something called the lung cancer detection algorithm but because covid covid is also based on lungs so you had this model which was already trained and then with very few images i'm just saying 1000 it will not be 1000 it will be a lot more than that but let's say with 1000 images you can take this cancer uh, lung cancer detection algorithm and create a covid detection algorithm because the underlying data is the same they are both looking at lung x rays and this is how uh, your um, uh, google teachable machine works okay google teachable machine works with few images you just take if you remember using google teachable machine you just upload a few images of something whether it's a fruit or you know uh, uh, or a face or, or 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 a sound whatever with just 30 40 images google teachable machine learns very very accurately and the reason it learns very accurately is because actually those machine learning models that is what they are called machine learning models have been trained on big data and now you are using new data which is borrowing from this big model and is very efficient with just a few images and this husky lens you will see works on a similar principle it it has the algorithms it is using you will just take like five photographs and it will recognize the reason it can learn so fast is because it is also relying on some other machine learning models which were very large and very well trained and now we are using transfer learning uh to make this new device learn something in a very uh with a very little data okay and the last type is a very interesting uh way of uh you know machine learning uh, how computers learn is it's called generative adversarial network so adversarial means enemy so what you what this is a very interesting model you have two machine learning models okay uh, so let's say we were training a machine learning model to recognize uh, you know whatever faces or famous painting or something like that then we we have we run two machine learning models in parallel and the way it works is that the first machine which is called a generator will create a fake image okay it will create a fake image based on real data and then it will give it to the other machine and the other machine has to figure out if it's a fake or if it's real okay so the second machine is called a discriminator and the second machine tries to figure out whether it was a fake or a real thing and what happens is by repeating this process again and again and again and again uh, the generator will keep creating an improved version of the fake and the uh, the uh, other machine will try to detect whether it's real or not and because two machines two machine learning models are like fighting each other it's like uh, you know two top students are challenging each other and in the process both are becoming better okay both are learning so this one is learning how to generate a better fake and the other one discriminator machine is learning how to detect a, a fake and in that sense by repeating the process again and again and again both the machines are becoming more intelligent okay and eventually the the goal is that this generator machine should create some image which is so real that the second machine the discriminator machine cannot figure it out okay so i am saying this because we are not going to go into gans but everywhere in the world today you may have heard the word deep fake deep fakes are becoming really they're going to become a big problem for misinformation okay misinformation means that i can create a deep fake by 
you know, using this kind of a GAN generative adversarial network to, to create anything. I can train a model to behave like the prime minister of a country. I can train a model to behave like some famous uh, actor or some famous news reader. And then I can create such a good fake of both sound and uh, image that I can create a fake video where it will seem as if the prime minister of a country or uh, uh, some very famous personality, uh, a sports personality maybe, is giving some information and you will think it's real, but it's not real. It's a deep fake. And deep fakes are becoming a big problem. I mean, right, this year is election year in America. I mean, right now it's election year in India also. But uh, in America, because, you know, all other countries like, let's say, Russia right now, they are very good in their cyber capabilities. So they will make such good deep fakes. And if you're listening to the news these days, it's happening. Uh, they are creating deep fakes, which look as absolutely real. You know, uh, I read yesterday, I think, I'm forgetting some, I think some very famous fa fashion show in New York and somebody has created a deep fake of a model who was not even there. So she was not there and she has, uh, I read the, in the news that her mother saw her and, you know, her mother congratulated her and she said, no, 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 it's not me. <laughs> it's a deep fake. So the person never went to New York for this fashion show, but uh, you know, it's happening. So I'm just saying that that is the power of AI, that this misinformation in the age of artificial intelligence is going to be so high that we have to prepare ourselves and our students. So that is why I really think that, you know, when you get something in social media, you should be very, very, very careful. These days, you will not know what is real and what is fake because these machines, these artificially intelligent machines are becoming better and better and better. And they will create such good fakes that we cannot, we will not be able to uh, figure out that, uh, uh, you know, is it real or not real. Okay. I'm just going to take a uh, pause for two minutes. If you have any questions, please ask. Okay, uh, so I'm just uh, repeating, this is what we had done last time, okay? So I'm saying that what we are doing this time, this whole, uh, you know, computer vision using Husky Lens, uh, we had done, we had got an introduction to computer vision last time. And if you remember, we started with something very simple. Uh, there was, there's a platform called Dancing with AI. And in Dancing with AI, you had created some models. So Dancing with AI, one part of Dancing with AI is about computer vision. And what they have done is what I was telling you, transfer learning, they have created models and you're simply calling the model. So if you remember dancing with AI, I could say like, you know, in this small program, you can see it says when smile is detected uh, or, you know, some human expression and you smile and the computer will recognize that this is the smiling face. You say angry, it will recognize angry face. And the reason it could do this is that somebody has trained a big model. It has shown millions of human smiling faces and now the computer has generated an algorithm to say what happens when a human smiles okay which muscles get pulled how do the eyes change whatever whatever analysis it has done it has now the computer can recognize all kinds of human expressions visually on the face so if you remember dancing with ai this is uh, what uh, you know dancing with ai you could do and all these videos for the new teachers, they are available. Uh, they are still available. Last year training uh, is available on this link. Uh, later on, I'll share these slides with you. And if you want, you can go and, uh, you know, view whatever we had done last year. And like that, uh, we're dancing with AI. Uh, I was explaining last time we had done these projects that when it comes to computer vision, it can do all kinds, like it can do hand gestures. So it can recognize gestures. Okay. It can do face sensing. Uh, it can do body sensing. So if you make some pose, the uh, this this machine learning algorithm recognizes all of those things. So if you remember what we had done was we were using the camera which was on our laptop or on our PC or a webcam and using that camera, 
dancing with ai was recognizing things okay uh, and i'm saying that what we are going to do today is we are going to use this camera which is already trained okay so i'm just trying to explain how what we are doing now is all connected to whatever we have been doing earlier okay so last year after we did dancing with ai we had done google teachable machine and google teachable machine can do uh, three things it, it it can recognize images so you can show it objects you can show it faces uh, anything you know uh, and it will learn to recognize those things whatever you will train the model on okay and like that uh, this husky lens comes with i think seven we'll we'll check it later i think seven uh, seven types of things it can recognize so it can recognize faces it can re recognize objects it can recognize colors it can recognize lines it can recognize tags uh, and a couple of other things okay uh, so i'm just making this connection that what we did with dancing with ai so dancing with ai was pre trained models you could not change it whatever they said that it can recognize a face or a hand gesture that was it but with google teachable machine you could train your own uh, uh, machine learning model you could show a uh, google teachable machine different objects and it would learn to recognize those objects and basically the three step process was that you take a lot of data so you show the pictures or sounds or whatever to google teachable machine and then you train the model then we if you remember we exported the model and we could call it on scratch or we could call it in uh, picto blocks and use our own model so dancing with ai was pre made models google teachable machine was where we created our own model and then uh, like if you remember we had done all these kind of thing we had done uh, retinal disease detection so uh, you can create the model yourself uh, i think we had also done crop disease detection last year you know you show the google teachable machine uh leaves uh with different types of uh you know healthy leaf versus sick leaf and even recognize the particular uh disease uh spotting or whatever and it could you could create a model which was uh which was which could detect diseases in crops okay uh and retinal so i'm just saying that I i'm explaining whatever we had done last time and how all this is very useful not just in making models but also for participating in challenges like manak and all okay um, and then finally what we had done last time was we had then uh, used picto blocks and in picto blocks you can do both you can use their models and simply use their ml machine learning models and you know make your own project or you could uh, train your model in let's say google teachable machine and call it in picto blocks and then use it so if you remember we had done things like you know there was a car and it the car moved forward and backwards based on what i am showing to my uh, uh, um, uh, uh, the camera on my pc or laptop so what i'm saying is if you remember that uh, that particular project where if i showed something some color to my camera on my uh, laptop then via bluetooth it was sending it to uh, you know microbit and there the machine the car was getting controlled what we can do now is with uh, with with husky lens that we will know we instead of using the camera on our laptop and remotely controlling the car we can train the machine train this husky lens and mount this on a car uh, you know on a robot or whatever and then the robot will follow whatever is the instruction here like let's say as an example i can uh, train this vision sensor to recognize red and green and then i can write a small program that if traffic light is red stop stop the car and if it is green move the car and that is your first step towards making a driverless car right or an autonomous car which you must have read there are so many driverless cars and all on the roads now uh, right so how do they work students can create simple models uh, using husky lens and that is something we'll look at we'll not actually make the car i'll teach you how to make it but we may not get the time to make it but you can uh, you know try it later with your students so uh, so that, so so i'm saying in pictoblocks the extensions we had used we could do both computer vision and 
natural language processing. Today and tomorrow, we'll focus more on computer vision. Uh, okay. So in uh, computer vision, uh, I am just going to briefly explain that it's not magic. Okay. When, when, when you take a photograph with, with, uh, uh, with Husky lens or with Google teachable machine, and it instantly recognizes, you know, what, what that object is, it is running a huge lot of statistical analysis. So let's say you upload a picture or, or show the, uh, computer image of a lion. What happens inside the machine is that the computer will will look at this photograph in hundreds of ways. Okay. So it may just look at the outline first. Okay. It may just look at the outline and then compare that outline with hundreds of other things that it has seen. And it will say, oh, this could be, this could be a horse. It could be a cat. This could be any four legged animal with a tail. Right. So it has done one level of analysis. Then it will do some other level of analysis. Okay. It will look at the same images. It will, it will really do pixel by pixel you know, analysis of, uh, so individual pixels, bunch of pixels and because, and that is why, you know, artificial, uh, intelligence is when it comes to computing power, it's very, very intensive. It uses a lot of computing power because it does all these computations. Okay. So it can look at that and then, you know, maybe do close up analysis and it can look at, okay. Uh, if it is like this, if the pixels are in, arranged in this way, it could be a, a a cat or a lion or a you know whatever some some animal in the cat family so what i'm saying is that it, that is what is happening behind the scenes in the engine we are not looking at it but that is what uh, you know the computer is actually doing it's looking at that same image and it's breaking it into hundreds of ways millions of ways in fact and that analysis is what it is telling uh uh, the the computer what it could be so i'm saying the computer actually does this it will do a pixel by pixel analysis and if it's a color image it will assign the rgb value the red green and blue value for every pixel and then it will compare it with hundreds of other millions of other photographs or, or whatever it has seen and then try to do correlations so this is we don't really know but probably this is how babies also learn when babies see lots of cats and lots of dogs, slowly they will learn, oh, this is a cat, this is a dog, right? And this is a fox and this is a wolf, like that. So just the way, uh, you know, human intelligence, we don't really know. We don't really know how human intelligence works, but we call this neural networks uh, in artificial intelligence. These are called deep learning or neural networks because we think this is how the neurons in our brain work. And now with the computer, we are trying to mimic the same way of, 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 you know, analyzing things like as a human vision, if I look at, uh, you know, Nitya Akka's face versus somebody else, I can instantly do the recognition. Why? What, what has happened inside my brain that I can process that this face is different from this face. And even the same face angry versus something, how do I recognize all this? There is some process happening in my brain. I've seen so many angry people that I know that, oh, this is how the eyes become. This is how the nose goes. This is how the face, you know, mouth goes. And now I know this is anger. So I'm saying computer is also doing a very similar statistical analysis. And that is kind of the, you know, the magic behind uh, all this. And that is what we call, uh, you know, uh, uh, machine learning. And this is kind of how it happens, right? Uh, all the all the dots here are like you know individual neurons in your brain and the computer looks at it and you know you know does lots of these kind of analysis and uh, uh based on this pixel by pixel analysis and bunching pixels together all kinds of mathematical statistical analysis uh uh it creates some output and one thing that you should know about ai is that when you look at the result of an ai uh, so the computer will not say that this is cat, dog, lion. It will say how sure it is. So in any, some image, it will say it is like 98% sure it's a lion, but maybe 1% it's a dog and maybe 0.5% it's a cat and something else. So it's always some probability because it's not 100% sure. I mean, it may sometimes give a 100% sure result. And normally it happens if I show the same face, like I, train the machine on a particular face and I show the same face, 
then the machine can say in 100% uh, you know uh, certainty that it's the same face but normally that's not how it is normally uh, it gives a probability it will tell you that it thinks that the probability that this is a lion or a or if it's a sound uh, i've trained a machine to recognize different types of uh, sounds which you know whenever you say something like hey siri uh, you know and your computer your your iphone will wake up uh, to hey siri it's it's being trained to recognize hey siri and it can recognize hey siri in hundreds of accents doesn't matter indian accent or american accent or british accent or any other accent it will recognize it right so i'm just saying that this is how uh, you know ai works that it has been trained it's basically a, a model it's a machine learning model on which it is working and it is working by doing all kinds of analysis just like human brains uh, learn and then eventually it also ba is based on probability it will tell you that it's probably 99% sure that what it heard was hey siri and not something else okay so this is how you know uh, this is like the big picture of of uh, what we are you know going to uh, uh, do and when you will come back um, when you will come back then we will actually get into uh, 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 you know using uh, husky lens so where i where i wanted to end was uh, where all is facial recognition being used because like i said one is for you to learn to operate uh, you know uh, ai or or you know whatever google teachable machine or husky lens or uh, arduino nano or whatever that is one aspect but even if you don't know how to use it you should know the applications so it's like you know do you know the uh, you don't have to know how the engine of the car works to drive the car you don't need to know how the motorcycle engine works to ride the motorcycle so it's something like that that you may not know how facial recognition works but it's important to know facial recognition and then I, uh, i'm saying in today's world you need to know for two reasons one to in a positive way that uh, you know where all can you use so I, you can make like maybe we can we'll try maybe that using a husky lens maybe we will we can create face facial recognition and make a, a, a attendance system which is based on facial recognition right so it recognizes student 1 student 2 student 3 and marks some attendance which is something similar to you know you are doing your thumbprint uh, in in your isha vidya it's a biometric right so it's a biometric that it says you put your thumbprint and it says yes this teacher has come to school today so i'm saying we can make something like that so facial recognition the good side is this the bad side like i said i can make it uh, use it for a deep fake okay uh, so facial recognition object recognition and classification okay so it can recognize objects which is something a husky lens can also do and we'll look at it um uh, image and video analysis husky lens can't do much of this it does some very basic image analysis it doesn't do any video analysis uh, but otherwise computer vision today can do all of these things you know it can be used in uh, ar and vr application it it has a big use in uh, autonomous vehicles and while we will not make an autonomous vehicle today and tomorrow but i will give you enough information that you can actually later on try to make some sort of an autonomous vehicle a driverless vehicle like i said you know some basic things like recognizing a uh, traffic light that's an easy one you can even train it to do more things and uh, we'll discuss that uh, uh, you know maybe later today um, then like i showed you that you know we had made the teachable machine for recognizing retinal problems because you know all these half of medical imaging is nothing but a digital image so all the x rays are nothing but a digital image right so if i can train a, a radiologist to look at a x ray of a chest or whatever and know an anomaly that this is a problem i can train a machine to do that in fact sometimes machines are becoming better because uh, you know humans forget machines don't uh, right so so sometimes especially i think in all these basic tasks a lot of ai is going to be used and uh, there are already so many apps and all that uh, you know if you haven't seen that uh, you know i bought these you know pair of spectacles uh, around two weeks back and i didn't go to the shop to try the frames okay i just took a photograph and you know turned my head and it showed me all the frames and i selected the frame uh, which i had shown last time also and uh, you know during a break you can try all this uh, there are lots of apps i think it's called specsavers 
uh, where you can do this. You can take your photograph and then move your head around and, you know, it'll keep putting on new pair of uh, glasses and you can see how they look on your face. Uh, and they, now you can do that for anything like, uh, you know, haircuts. So your hairstyle or, you know, some shirt you want to try on. So all this is happening now before you buy a shirt on uh, Amazon or Flipkart. Uh, all these things are possible that I can put my body shape, uh, upload that and it can, it'll put on different, you know, shirts on me and tell, show me how I will look from all angles. And then I can you know, make a, a, a decision, uh, quality control and inspection. So lots of times when products are moving in the assembly line, uh, there are these AI cameras like Husky Lens, which are taking the photograph. And if they detect a problem, uh, so, uh, you know, quality control, it is a lot of it is today based on AI. Okay, visual search. So if you haven't seen the Google new app, uh, now you can do image search on Google. Very nice, right? Uh, if you haven't seen it, try it. Uh, you know, just take a photograph or uh, point your camera to something and it'll tell you. Uh, Google is advertising a lot if you have seen some of the YouTube videos. So visual search is uh, finally like image based search. So, you know, like you like some new pair of shoes somebody is wearing and you want to get more information, you just point the camera and it will take a photograph of that, uh, uh, you know, uh, of the shoe. It will search and it will show you similar uh, shoes. I have used it so many times because, you know, lots of times when you don't recognize something, uh, uh, you can just take a photograph and it does image recognition now. Uh, okay. Um, so, so there are all these possibilities uh, where computer vision is being used. So as we, in the next session, as we actually start uh, using Husky Lens, think of these things because like as I'm saying that you need to know the how to use the Husky Lens, but you also need to know how it can be used and your students, you can then guide your students, you know, when it comes to Manak and things like that. Okay. Uh, so again, I'm going to stop here. We're going to get into Husky Lens when you come back. Uh, but before that, if you have any questions, please ask.